Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2014. We're going to be taking a look at Steven Seagulls and we're going to be looking at their version of Thunderstruck by ACDC. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just going to jump in here. We've gone full bluegrass with this version of Thunderstruck. Just the start of the video, rocking up on a lawnmower with your accordion. It's such a cool start. It's really well shot, the video as a whole, and it's a totally live performance, which sometimes on YouTube you will see the video element of it, but it has obviously been recorded professionally in a studio and mixed, and there's a lot of post-production on it. But here, it's just straight up live, and it's great to see and hear the tightness of the band as a whole, but also the technical ability, because there is so much going on here across the board, Obviously, people are going to be focused on the riff and the banjo playing. It's exactly the same technique that you'll find on electric guitar with the alternate picking. And I think even here they are pushing the tempo, making it sound even more bluegrass. So to play this riff just at standard tempo is difficult when you're playing it with full alternate picking. You will see in the video for the actual song by ACDC, Angus Young, looking like he's doing hammer-ons and pull offs on the neck of the guitar and you get a shot down the guitar neck so you can see there's no picking going on but when you're listening to the recording there's definitely alternate picking going on there and there's different ways that you can play this riff you can alternate pick obviously that's going to take the most technical ability and the most practice to get it spot on but that's exactly what we have here you can also pick every other note which will make it slightly easier or you can just pick every time you fret a note with your finger and do pull-offs, and that's gonna be even easier. 
if you're trying to do hammer-ons and pull-offs like Angus is doing in the video, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get the same sound. Your turn at picking also adds that aggressiveness to the sound, and that's what you'll find across the board whenever you're playing a run or a particular riff. If you start to put more picks in, it's going to sound more aggressive. It's got more attack in there because every single note is being punctuated by your playing. So we have the riff played as it is on the record here, but on banjo, and because all of the techniques cross over, it's another stringed instrument, and we can see the pick going through all of that alternate picking in the video, you get banjo players that are great guitarists and vice versa. Just to throw out there as well, these guys are from Finland, so they're performing it in English, but there's no real strong accent in there, so it doesn't detract at all. And the vocals, just putting those under the spotlight because we are an octave below that original vocal by Brian Johnson, but because it's a totally different version, you don't really notice. It doesn't stand out as being totally different and in a totally different range to that original song. As long as you just perform it your own way and put a different spin on it and put your personality into it, it will sound like a different take, a unique version of that original song, and it will just stand up on its own credibility rather than trying to copy that original too much because just trying to copy the vocals on this song and Brian Johnson's voice, we're talking about a B4, C5, D5, really high notes in the male tenor range. It wouldn't work with this as well because to keep that bluegrass sound to it, you don't have really raspy, high tenor sounding vocals with bluegrass. It's all got that conversational quality to it, like country music. So it's just such a great example of doing your own version of a song, but doing it really well. It's interesting in this performance because once that guitar drops out, and we also have some backing vocals in here, which is really good to hear as well. It's spot on vocally with the backing vocals, but as soon as that riff drops out, the accordion takes over and just punches in that rhythm. And it's so well done that the guitar, the banjo in this case, doesn't seemingly drop out. And that's something that in the original composition, that guitar is always in there, in the mix. Angus's picking is brought down in the mix when Malcolm comes in with his solid rhythm but it's always somewhere there in the mix. So it's great here, just the arrangement as well. The other thing that we've got here is the upright bass. And unfortunately we don't get to hear clearly what's going on, but that's just the nature of the beast when you're recording something totally live and it is relatively off the cuff from a recording point of view because we haven't got mics all over the place here and you certainly would have on the upright bass if you were doing a professional recording of it. So it's even more impressive considering that they've just set up a few mics out of shop to pick up the ambient sound and don't have everything mic'd up individually, but then we get such a great sound overall just from the guys being so well rehearsed and so tight. Something that I want to mention about this performance as well that you might not have noticed unless you know what key the song's in, the anvil is tuned to B. And when I say it's tuned to B, I don't know how you tune an anvil, but it just happens to be in the exact right spot pitch-wise when you hit it to go along with this song, which the original is on that open B string with the opening riff. And I mentioned about the B4, the C5 and the D5, all of those vocal notes that are in there. So it is a perfect anvil for this performance. But let's get back into the video.
And there we have it. What a great live performance that was. We've also got the mandolin in there, of course. Just to focus on the tempo again, because I said about them pushing the tempo because of the style of music, but also the emphasis on 16th notes, which is something that you will always get in bluegrass and country playing as well. So much alternate picking going on. And by the way, this kind of playing, alternate picking on clean tones and on banjos was around well before guys started shredding in the 80s. All of the techniques were already there. It just so happened that by the 70s and the 80s, distortion pedals were all the rage and they started doing these techniques, but with distortion. So it sounded different, but take all of that distortion off the sound and you've got bluegrass playing. Also, when you're focusing on major scales and especially around G, as you do in bluegrass, you get that happier sound. And as soon as you convert those scales into the minor forms, then you get a more rocky sound. And that's what was happening in the 80s. Exactly the same techniques that were being done on the banjo well earlier were just then being reproduced in minor keys. So all of those picks throughout the song with the riff on the banjo are 16th notes. And this is something that you get all the time with bluegrass. And it just so happens that it's on the original composition as well that they're covering. Having all of that emphasis on every single 16th note, and I have explained this before, but I'll quickly go through it again, because the cover that they're playing progresses by focusing more on the beats of the bar, and I'm just talking about one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but the riff is the 16th notes. And then as we progress into the cover and we get further into it, we're then getting the drums emphasizing the 16th notes as well. So it's really now starting to move along. And the 16th notes, if you imagine that we've got this bar of space and we've just fitted four beats into that bar, we've now got to try and fit 16 of those same notes and beats into that bar. So they have to be done so much faster. So I'm just gonna hit the table to give you an example. We're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The camera's probably shaking and everything because I'm hitting the table, but hopefully you could hear when I'm tapping those faster taps are 16th notes. And in this composition and this performance, we have Every single pick of that string is a 16th note. So it's being picked at that speed. And obviously once you start to push the tempo, that goes even faster. So there is a lot of technique and technical ability required to keep that riff going the whole time down to those open strings, keeping it clean. Anyone who has played Thunderstruck with all of that alternate picking in there will know you've just got to keep concentrated the whole time. And it is by far an easy song to play on the guitar, even though people will assume it's easy to play because it sounds easy because of the guy playing it in the first place, Angus Young, but there is so much technique involved to keep that consistent. I always say on this channel that playing and singing at the same time doubles the difficulty, and we've got that across the board here with the harmony vocals as well. That main riff is being played the same time as providing those harmonies. So all of that alternate picking, all of that technique that I've already mentioned is going on at the same time as a harmony vocal. So doubly impressive stuff there. This is one of those videos that went viral on YouTube and it's had 96 million views at this point when I'm looking at it, but it's because of the technical ability and the arrangement and everything that's in there for a live performance is so impressive because there is such musical integrity with what they're doing, just playing it their own way and putting that bluegrass twist on it, but also the ability at their instruments in order to play and sing and give such a great live performance of Thunderstruck by ACDC. Who would have thought it that you'd get such a great bluegrass rendition of it? But that's what can happen when you get great musicians together and they put their own spin on a classic. And these guys, by the way, are touring and they're touring in Australia and then they go back to Finland and Sweden and then they go back to Australia again. So they're certainly getting in the air miles, but spreading around there. And I think they're 
also playing in Europe and France, I saw, as one of the last dates on the tour. So uh, if you are in Europe, you can check these guys out soon, especially in Finland and Sweden, and then all the way over in Australia. But thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at, and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the next one.